Philly went right down the field. I don't think they had an opening touchdown, opening score and drive all season long. Uh, it went right down the field, scored, uh, got whatever they wanted. It was just a bad omen. Falcons responded and got a touchdown. Uh, he even got the lead in the fourth quarter, but it was just it just seemed like a bad omen. Uh, Philly hadn't been able to run it at all really much this year, and they let Ryan Matthews get loose. Uh, so, yeah, again, we will <laughs> talk in-depth Falcons later. Um, bad news, you know, you lose the game. Falcons, good news is everybody else, or both Carolina and New Orleans, I should say, both lost in the NFC South. Uh, the Saints lost to Denver 25-23 <laughs> on a block extra point. Uh, very good game. Denver is on a bye as well. So they wanted to go into the bye with a victory. They were coming off the loss to the Raiders. Uh, that was a very good game. But New Orleans goes down, ties it. Beautiful clock management. They made themselves use all their timeouts. I believe they had one in the chamber left. Um, but Denver had used all of their timeouts. New Orleans scores, ties the game at 23. They're kicking an extra point to go up 24-23 with like a minute left, minute 22. I believe that was the exact number. Uh, yeah, it blocked it, but he jumps. This new leaping over the center, leaps over the center, blocks it, picks it up, uh, takes it in. Denver takes it in. It's a win in the game, 25-23. <laughs> yeah. So now Denver, like I said, sitting at 7-3. and three. Get to heal some wounds on the bye week. Take advantage of that. And they're just a half game off the lead in the AFC West. They're definitely, you know, as of right now, they're a playoff team. Um, yeah, Kansas City, they beat Carolina. Carolina lost to Kansas City. <laughs> yeah, a wild finish. Uh, Cam throws an inexplicable pick in the fourth. Gets taken back. Eric Berry weaves through the defense, takes it back to the house. Marcus Peters strips Kelvin Benjamin. He scored about 10. I think they scored most of these points in the fourth quarter of that game. Absolutely wild. Yeah, Carolina, like I said, you're not on the championship board. Uh, but with the way the Falcons are not taking advantage of things, you're still in the hunt in the NFC South. I believe, putting it out there regarding the NFC South, and then I'll move on. NFC South, 10 wins will win the division. Uh, Falcons are at six and four. Uh, Ten wins will definitely win the division. I think if you're at nine and seven, you're going to be looking at some tiebreakers and some scenarios and all kind of things like that. Ten wins definitely wins the division. Nine and seven, you may end up being tied with somebody else. So Carolina's three and six, New Orleans four and five. They actually get week 11 started Thursday night. Um, yeah, <laughs> loser, going to be in trouble. Carolina has, I don't believe they have any more mulligans. They're three and six. They need, they need to win the last five of these last, or some, I'm sorry. How many they need to win? Yeah, they got seven left. They need to win at least six or seven. I don't know. They, they damn near need to run the table. So we'll see what happens there. Tampa Bay, they did get a win in the division. They are four and five. Falcons fans just one behind you in the loss column. They beat... Uh, Chicago, 36-10. Chicago's done. We're not going to spend a lot of time on Chicago. Uh, he's bad. He's getting as average as the NFC North is right now. Uh, Chicago 2-7. and seven. Hey, it is what it is. <laughs> I always find this funny, Chicago fans, how oh, after the Monday night football game, and, and Chicago's coming off the bye week, after the Monday night football game and beat Minnesota, Jay Cutler looked good in the game. And here come the think pieces about Jay Cutler. <laughs> Maybe he's just misunderstood. <laughs> All these different things. But when he throws two, two picks, 10 points, takes his team completely out of the game <laughs> against Tampa Bay, who had let teams roll it up against him. Mind you, Tampa, remind you, Tampa Bay had given up 500 yards to Derek Carr and had just given up a 40 burger to, <laughs> excuse me, given up a 40 burger to the Falcons. All of this at home. Yeah, Chicago goes down there and scores 10. <laughs> Jay Cutler, hey, man, it is what it is. <laughs> like I said, no more time on them. Uh, Tampa Bay and Kansas City face off this week. Uh, props to Kansas City in week 11. It's going to be a good one. Uh, props to Kansas City. Kansas City has won five in a row. Again, I mentioned they beat Carolina. They're 7-2. and two. They are in first place. They're on the tiebreaker in the AFC West. 
last year regarding Kansas City. I never had them on the championship board, if you heard the show last year. Um, And I don't consider them a threat. But, and the more and more I watch them, the more and more, and, you know, go, go, if you go over the numbers with them, they are. They're a good team. I, again, I believe they're a team that's certain. They're going to struggle against a team that's going to go out there and put points on the board. Uh, but, yeah, man, Andy Reid knows how to manage an NFL football game, top to bottom, offense, defense, special teams. <laughs> yeah, man, he is, his teams are usually sound in all three phases, and that's how he wins ball games. I'm starting to reconsider them for this year's championship board. Got to. They're in first place. They're playing good ball. Uh, I do believe Kansas City is built for the regular season, but, uh, you know, this year is different. I just feel like this year is different. It's a lot more wide open than uh, previous years. Chicago, regarding them real quick, Chicago travels up to New York. They go to New York, um, face the Giants, Giants 6-3. and three. Giants beat Cincinnati on Monday Night Football 21-20. Uh, Giants are, they have a soft spot in their schedule. Uh, the offense, hey, you ran it better than you did the week before. Again, Giants are coming off the bye as well. Uh, but you ran it better than you did the week before. The defense is playing better. Defense had a lull, started out good, had a lull. Defense has picked it back up. Landon Collins is very (laughs) slowly becoming my favorite player, one of my favorite players, absolutely. He is a ball player on the back end of that defense. Uh, You're turning teams over. You're getting to the quarterback a little bit more. Um, and, And we know the dink and dump pass game that you have, the very sophisticated pass game that you have. If you can get a run game to complement things, then we got something to talk about, Giants fans. A <laughs> real rep. If you can do that, um, you have a chance. Again, you get a soft spot in your schedule. Get the, I believe the Giants get Chicago this week, Cleveland next week, something crazy like that. So, yeah, take advantage of that. Giants have a chance, you know, with all these teams jumbled up around that 500 mark. Giants are at 6-3. They have a chance to move well away from 500 over the next couple weeks. Um, Cincinnati. They're at home to host Buffalo. Yeah, Buffalo will be coming off the bye. Cincinnati is teetering 3-5-1. and one. Baltimore is 4-5. and five. This will be a championship board eliminator early. Looser this game. I doubt you're going to see the board at all. Uh, Buffalo needs to come out out of the bye week, figure out how to get back to 500. Not you're headed for 8-8. Eight and eight. <laughs> You are absolutely headed for 8-8. Eight, eight and eight. Um very interesting story. Real quick story regarding Cincinnati. I was in the bar Sunday, um, and the Bengals didn't play till Monday. The guy was in there. He was a Bengals fan, so we're chatting it up. And uh, he tells me how Cincinnati has this number. And he says the number's 22. <laughs> He's like, when Cincinnati scores 22 points, they're, you know, they usually win. When they're under 22, <laughs> they lose. And I went and looked at their record, and, hey, he is a lion, man. So that's the number with Cincinnati, 22 points. If you want to look for something, if Cincinnati gets north of 22, they probably have won the football game. I think they tied one game over the last two years, that, you know, at 27 or something crazy like that. But, yeah, <laughs> Cincinnati, got to get it going. Got to get it going. Um, yes, you are in the AFC North, and, and division is still up for grabs and all that stuff, but I don't know. I don't know what to make of Cincinnati. I, I believe their championship window is closed. I told the guy this, in the, I told um, the gentleman I was talking to at the bar regarding this, I said, hey, I really believe the, the most talent you had, top to bottom, was on that team last year and uh, didn't take advantage. Uh, Let's stay in the AFC North. The Pittsburgh Steelers took it on the chin. (laughs) Yes, they lost to Dallas 35-30. Pittsburgh is now 4-5. We talked about this. They're below 500. Pittsburgh has lost four in a row. Uh, The sky is falling. (laughs) They, They are clearly reeling. And, I, you know, when you watch them, the big bad... Steelers of old, them days are over. They get ran on. They got gashed again this week. Uh, that, uh, that front seven, man, they used to never get pushed around. That front seven, you knew you weren't going to be able to run it against Pittsburgh. 
Like, you literally went in there with kind of a New England game plan. Like, all right, we're not going to be able to run it against them, so where else can we exploit in this defense? Because trying to run it is banging your head up against the wall. Uh, But those days are over. Pittsburgh, thank goodness you get Cleveland this week. Try to get right. Cleveland lost to Baltimore again, staying in AFC North. Cleveland lost to Baltimore week 10, Thursday night game, 28-7. We know what it is with Cleveland. Baltimore, hey, now 5-4. We'll see. (laughs) Baltimore, like I said, uh, you beat Cleveland. uh, You get Dallas this week. If you go beat Dallas this week, Baltimore, Baltimore again, got a good defense, got a good run D. Go beat Dallas. You go beat Dallas, then I'll consider you a threat. Um, if not, beating Cleveland, beating, you know, beating some of these lesser teams, Jacksonville, a bad Buffalo team to start the year, that, that doesn't do much for me. Baltimore, again, go beat, it, beat an elite Dallas team, and I'll believe you. Uh, speaking of Dallas, again, the hottest team in the NFL, the best record in the NFL, winners of eight in a row. <laughs> on nephew squad so we talk about it all the time again Dak Prescott freaky Zeke Ezekiel Elliott we have never seen anything like this ever and that's what's so beautiful this is the beauty of sports this is one thing I love about sports every year you get a story that you did not see coming uh, you had no clue how it was going to play out that's what makes this the best reality show there ever is. <laughs> the best reality show on television is sports. This Dallas story is amazing, man. <laughs> Dak and, and Ezekiel Elliott are absolutely, we got to come up with a name for the dynamic duo. <laughs> Freaky Zeke has his name. Dak is QB1, by the way. Again, people in Dallas, if you want to help me, we'll get the sign. We'll go put it in his yard like in Varsity Blues when my man, R.I.P. Paul Walker, when he went down and he was no longer able to be the quarterback and James Vanderbeek took over. And they went and put the QB1 sign in the yard. We need to go do that for Dak because Dak is clearly QB1. Um, <laughs> Tony Romo, it looks like he's going to dress. Talk Cowboys real quick. Tony Romo looks like he's going to dress this week. Tony Romo held a press conference, came out and said, hey, I see it. <laughs> I clearly see it. I am no fool. This is Dak's team now. It is his time. And, uh, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> I won't bash Tony. Hey, it's a young man's game, Tony. But I would say this. Stay ready. Stay ready. Stay ready. Stay ready. Dallas is in a really good position. Dallas not only has the best record, you know, they're doing what they're doing with, with Dak and with Ezekiel Elliott leading the way. Dak gets better each week. He's using Jason Witten. He hits Cole Beasley on, their, on his underneath stuff. When in doubt, if you leave him, uh, Dez out, out top, outside one-on-one, he's going to hit you with Dez. You can't double everybody. You can't keep, can't stack the box. You can't do all these things and account for everyone. Um, so, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, then you have the best insurance plan in Tony Romo. If anything happens to Dak, Dak struggles, which regresses way back to the means, which doesn't look like that's going to happen. Uh, anything like that, you've got a great insurance plan. <laughs> it's a good problem. Jerry Jones did say this a while back. I'll give him credit for this. Hey, man, we got a good problem. This is a good problem to have, <laughs> no doubt. Uh, I will say this, Dak and, and Freaky Zeke, co-MVPs for Rookie of the Year, MVP candidates for sure. Uh, before you say, well, look at that offensive line. You know, they're doing all this behind that offensive line, best O-line in football. Uh, Derek Carr, he's my man. He's my quarterback <laughs> for sure. My quarterback, MVP candidate. He's not playing behind chopped liver, fam. <laughs> the, the armor roll is real. We protect the car <laughs> for sure. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely circle the Denver Oh, excuse me, definitely circle that Dallas-Baltimore game. I will be tuned into that. <laughs> it's been amazing to watch this story play out with Dak and Freaky Zeke. I'll, I'll move on from that. Uh, Dallas, win or lose, though, you're on the championship board <laughs> for sure. New England, 
you're on the championship board. Win or lose, you're on the championship board. Um, New England travels to San Francisco. You can book this.